Hello and welcome to Easy 1099 Excel. Create easy 1099s using Excel. If you have the Excel program on your computer system, you should be able to use this template to create 1099 miscellaneous easy, very easy for any company. First thing you do when you get uh, when you order the product, um, we will email the product to you as an attachment. You just open the attachment, it's an Excel spreadsheet, and you go directly to this page, which is the Enter Data Here tab. Here, um, under the Enter Data Here tab, at the top, you have the payer's name. So if you're doing this for one company, or you're doing it for multiple companies, you can use the spreadsheet to do it for each individual company. So let's say uh, your company that you're wanting to produce the 1099s for is a company called ABC Company. And we just put the name here in uh, cell C1, then their address in C2, and a secondary address in C3, if it's like a suite or an apartment number or something, and then the city, state, and zip, and the taxpayer's ID number. Coming over here, I know this is a little hard to see, but if you follow me on this spreadsheet itself, it's easier. You put the contact person's name, their phone number, fax number, and their email address. Um, what I've done is I have put in any, anything in the spreadsheet that's in gray here, like this, this color gray, you can enter into. If it's not gray and you try to enter something, you'll get an error message because it's locked down. So if you go to um, line uh, key number one, which is on Excel spreadsheet, again, the tab is enter data here. And if you go to B9, which is key one, and there I've entered John Q. Public with his address as 123 My Street, City, Anytown, New York, is the state <laughs> zip code uh, 10000 then you put their tax ID number and you do that if you're if you're paying a company you do it in the tax ID number format for a company otherwise you do it in the tax ID a number format for a social security number if you have an account number and you want to use an account number you can put it here if you don't have one you can leave it blank it, it won't make any difference if you're producing a 1099 for rents, royalties, or other income, those are in boxes 1, 2, and 3. Most people use 1099 to produce for box 7, which is non-employee compensation. And you can fill that, that number in here if, if you've paid someone over $600 and you're required to send them a 1099. If you withheld any federal income tax, and this is important, box four, enter that amount here if you withheld any tax, because that, that will show up on the 1099, and that's important for tax purposes. Um, box nine states that any payer made direct sales of payer made direct sales of five thousand or more of consumer products to a buyer recipient for resale. Just enter yes here. Most people uh, and it will require you to enter either yes or blank, and most people don't even use that. Um, and then the other boxes that are on the 1099 miscellaneous, you can enter here. Box 11 and 12 are blank, so just don't worry about those. And then box 10 was crop insurance proceeds. Box 13, excess gold and parachute payments. Box 14, gross proceeds paid to an attorney. Uh, box 15A, Section 409A, Deferrals. Box 15B, Section 409A, Income. Box 16 and Box 16 number 1 and Box 16 number 2, we have a place for two different states. Um, the states you would enter in Box 17 1 and Box 17 2. If you're doing Florida, I used Florida and Georgia. If your state has, a, you need to report state income as well as state withholding. Uh, 16 1 is for any tax withheld related to box 17 1 state, related to box 18 1's state income. Go over here a little bit further. 
So if you had someone who worked in, let's say, the state of Florida and they earned $181 here um, and you withheld 161 then that's how it would go. Florida for box 17-1, uh, Florida income 18-1, and Florida withholding uh, box 16-1. A second dairy state I used here is Georgia. That would be box 17-2 for Georgia. 18-2 for Georgia income, in this case $182, and box 16-2 for any Georgia state income tax withheld. And again, there, that's the 162. So once you enter all the data, and enter as many as you like, up to 100, it goes to 100. After 100, you'll have to start another one. And you can save this program, use it however you want. I've entered a sample data up to six individuals here. Once you've entered the data and you're convinced that the data is correct and you're ready to print 1099s, you very simply go to the next tab, the black tab, and it says it will print four copies. It'll print copy B, copy 1, copy 2, and copy C. And it will print these very easily, one at a time. The first thing you do is come up here and enter the key of the first one you want to print. So you just enter the key, like for instance we'll enter number one, and it will populate the 1099 with all the data that you put in the tab stated enter data here. And then you just print. And it will print this particular 1099 that will go to this individual, John Q. Public. It will also print, that is copy B. It will also print over here copy 1 for the state, state tax department that will be mailed to the state tax department. It will also print copy 2, which will be filed with the recipient's state income tax return. So this particular one, copy 2, and Copy B will go to the individual, be mailed to the individual. Copy 1 will be mailed to the state. And then the final copy over here, copy C, is for your records. You keep this one for your records, and there's instructions that tell you what to do. You can also download the instructions on the IRS website if you need to. So you just hit number 1, and then print, then number 2, and then print, and number 3, then print, number 4, and then print, number five, then print, number six, and then print. And in my case, I only had six data elements. You may have 20 1099s you need to get out. Anyway, it will populate all these and print all these, and all of the, the four copies that get printed for each individual need to be in the mail no later than January 31st. If you get that done, um, then that's the 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 first critical date that you have to be January 31st in getting your um, 1099 1099 miscellaneous out to the people that you paid then by February 1st you will have to print copy A and copy 1096 I have tabs here for copy A which will print like this unfortunately the way the IRS requires is that you print on approved uh, copy a paper in this particular case what I've done and you can do this to go on the on the um, IRS website and I'm, when I sent you the email with the uh, Excel spreadsheet I sent you the link to where you can order these but you can see right here this is the copy a of the 1099 that you will need to print on now, as you can see, this comes as though it were prepared for a dot matrix. It has all the other copies that you've already printed you don't need. So what we're going to do, and just to make this very easy, is you're going to tear off the first page, copy A, which is the red page. Now, very important, do not tear it off at the perforation. You see this perforation here. Do not tear it off there. Come over to the side and tear it off with the preparation preparation intact okay and I'm gonna do that right here see if you can see how I'm doing that tearing this off all the way down 
and I now have a eight and a half by eleven with a perforation um, copy A that I'm going to mail to the IRS, and I'm going to print on this. The part I tore off, these, you've already printed. You don't need these anymore. You can just throw these away. This is the only one you need. So in order to print this, and the way this works is that you're printing copy one and then copy two, I, or I'm sorry, recipient number one and recipient number two on the same page. Okay, so you'll need one of these for every two 1099s that you've printed. So let's say you printed, um, in my case, six. I'll need three of these, okay? And I'll, I will print my key number one on this one, key number two on this one, down on the bottom. So up here at the top on the spreadsheet, um, in, again in gray, you can print, you can enter one in the first box for the two keys that you're gonna print, then enter two. Okay, and that, that will show that I'm going to print um, copies one and to, uh, copy A for recipients one and two. Okay, so what I'm going to do is load this in my printer. I'm opening up my printer and I'm um, putting it in here such that it will print on the red copy, the red side, the way I want. And I just close that and I just simply hit print. Give it a little second to print. And then I'll show you how it all lines up. Sorry for the noise of my printer. Okay, here we go. And as you can see, it printed everything in the correct spaces. So this should work for you and in your printer. Uh, if you have a laser or if you have a dot uh, or a uh, inkjet printer, it doesn't matter. It should line up and it should print, and you shouldn't have any problem with it. The the um, spacing for all of the data within the boxes is absolutely correct. Okay, if you're off to the left or right or to the up and down. If you need to just shift everything as a unit up or down, you can do that just by coming over here to line eight and grabbing hold of that double bar and moving up or down as you need. Okay, that's printing copy A. And again, this isn't due until February 28th. So you've got until February 28th to mail this one. Then you go to copy uh, 1096. The 1096 is the cover that goes on top of the copy A's that you mail into the IRS. This is what a 1096 looks like. And again, you can order this from the same website that I gave you in the email. You can also get these forms from Staples or Office Depot or Office Max. It doesn't matter. Um, the forms are available and they all work pretty much the same way, but you just have to buy them. With the IRS, it's free. All you have to do is order them. It does take about 15 days. But keep in mind, if you order these in January, you do not need these until the end of February. So you're fine. you got plenty of time. Now, unfortunately, the 1096 comes to us as 8 by 10, not 8 and a half. I'm sorry, 8 by 11, not 8 and a half by 11. So uh, it's as if they've taken the perforation off. But what I've done is I've, I've set this up so that it will print on here correctly, centered. What you have to do is take your, uh, your normal paper, your 8.5 by 11 paper, out of your paper tray and replace it with this 1096, which is actually not 8.5 by 11, but 8 by 11. And so you, you close in your guides so that it, it sits snugly and then you just have that one sheet of paper in your in your um, paper tray for your printer. That's all you got to do. And then you hit close the paper tray. And again, you want to uh, set up so that it's going to print on the red part. And then you just hit print. 
and so it'll print and when it comes out it should look um, everything should be lined up and ready to be sent to the IRS Sorry, just wait on my printer here a second. Okay, here we go. And as you can see, everything printed correctly in the right uh, boxes, the phone number, the name, and everything else. Um, also, this little X down here is in the 1099 miscellaneous because, again, that's what this Excel spreadsheet is for, 1099 miscellaneous. All right, um, that's it. That's all you got to do. And then the, the two red forms, this 1096 plus all of the uh, co copy A's that you printed uh, for all, your, all, the, all the people that you paid, then are just put together, uh, no paper clips or staples, and you stick it in an envelope and mail it. Um, Depending on where you live, according to the instructions, they'll tell you where to mail it. I think it's either Austin, Texas, or some uh, uh, Kansas City, Missouri. But anyway, depending on where you live. And mail that in before February 28th, and you are done. So, again, just to summarize, to, to the most important part is getting the, by January 31st, getting the 1099s out to the payers, the people, the payees, the people that you paid. And so... Um, that, that's very easily done, as we said, uh, entering the data here on the Enter Data tab, and then also running them here. And that'll print the four copies that you need to send out, three to send out, one to keep. All right? Um, hope that uh, is very clear for everyone, and uh, hope it all works out well for you. If you have any questions, just respond to my email. All right? Thank you. Have a good tax season.